Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hopefully you can hear me. Somebody give me a shout out if you can hear me all right. That way I know I'm not talking to nobody, but before we move on here, looks like we got Hell on Wheels, Cody Powell. Thanks for joining in. All right, so I'll kind of give you a little bit of the back. Uh, the backstory on this paint job is I, I painted this about 10 years ago. Um, we did, uh, it was with another painter and he was able to do all the, the base work and all basically all I had to do was the mural. And I did that and I did a little bit of the background on this as well. But since then, uh, well, he, he painted it flat black. Uh, it was great for a while, but you know, things have kind of grown. Um, it's a whole bagger, uh, tank and fender, so, and bags bagger uh so he wanted it metal plate so um without disturbing what we already had done because we kind of wanted to keep that you know, the same marilyn monroe that i did like i said i did a while back uh we just taped that off we scuffed everything down 600 grit we uh taped off around the portrait to save it and then we laid down the metal flake um after the metal flake was applied we pulled that off and then we re-cleared it um you know three or four four coats and then sanded it back down so the edge is gone but uh what i'm gonna do here is just basically work around what we already have going on so we have we already know we have marilyn Monroe on this one side of the tank the other side of the tank is empty um we're gonna do something different over there but uh but we're gonna kind of get the the overall paint scheme and get it all figured out on this side since um basically this already has something done to it so it'd be good a good side to start on and then we can kind of you know match it up to a certain point on the other side um so that's all this has all been clear coated and sanded down again with 600 grit it's all nice and clean i'll go ahead and clean it one more time thanks mike okay it looks like you guys can hear me great Yeah, let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to clean this with glass cleaner because, and I get this question all the time as well, why are you using glass cleaner instead of wax and grease remover? Well, because I already know this is clean. With This came straight out of the booth. It's sanded. I know I didn't have anything on my hands. Usually I wear gloves, but um, so that's why I'm just using glass cleaner. That's all that's really needed. We're just, we're just trying to pull off the sanding residue. Unless you add chicken wings for lunch. Then you're going to want to wax and grease it. So, if not, glass cleaner actually works a little better. Kevin in South Africa, what's up, man? Drew, thanks for being here, guys. All right, we're also live on Amazon as well. If you click on the Amazon link, it should be down in the con or in the description. Uh, but you, but all the stuff I'm using here, you'll be able to find it on that link. All right, let's get started here. So this is what I come up with so far. Uh, this is just a printout, and maybe I can show you on my phone. It'll make a little more sense to you guys. I can show you exactly. Uh, how I went about. Okay, let's see. All right, I just went online. I think you see this. So, uh, yeah, I went online, just found some clip art, and I'm in the process of just weeding it out right now. So I took that clip art, I loaded it up in to the Cricut Design Space, and then you're able to hit upload. You can upload from your library, and then there it is right there. You have it pulled up and then uh, it allows you to edit by removing the background or it has these tools right here that you can use but uh, really handy tool it's with the Cricut this is the the software that comes with the Cricut Maker 3 I think any Cricut Maker will work but it, I think it's called this let me look at it here design space is what it is super easy to use just off of an image I was able to to cut that out like I said I still need to weed it out 
and uh, that's going to be the second part of the design. And then I'll I'll kind of uh, lay out the tape and configure the rest of the design once I have these couple of elements in there. So I didn't weed it out yet because I really wanted to kind of place it up there and see you know what kind of direction I wanted it in. If I didn't like the way it looked, you could always mirror it before you cut it in, in that same app. So if you wanted that over there and it just seemed to work better this way. Um, I looked at it and I kind of felt like this would be a better way. But uh, what I, I, you can see here, I used to actually have it. I had it airbrushed in almost this exact same design. You can see just a little portion of it there where it kind of like uh, looped up through. I'm gonna, basically I'm gonna uh, replicate what I did there, but we're gonna do it with masking um, the opposite way because it's not getting an airbrush. We're, we're moving, um, with, we're working with candies now. So it's a little bit different, but uh, I'm gonna lay out a stencil uh, here and then kind of figure out where I want it, lay it down, and then we'll go ahead and run the graphics around it to see how we, how everything goes. So I'll go ahead and start by finishing weeding this thing out. Hey, Skipper, Mark, thanks for joining in. So uh, let's move this back here a little bit. All right. See y'all. Y'all can see y'all right. So I'm just gonna take this design right here. I'm gonna weed out the parts that I don't want. I already took out the outer edge, the form around it, so it's out, so we can see the edge. So when I when I held it up, I can kind of see. So uh, it's a little bit of a tedious process here, but I'm gonna pull out each one of these dots that make the make the edge of the uh, the film roll I'll get you guys in here a little closer so you can see This is way better than cutting them all out, that's for sure. You know, it takes a minute to weed them out, but there's that side. You see how it's starting to look like a film roll. We'll also pull out the center, but I'll do that once these are done.
I really wish there was a fast forward feature on this live <laughs> for you guys. Trying to pull out the insides here, as you can see. I don't know if anybody's asked the question or not what kind of vinyl I'm using, uh, but uh, I'm just using a mask, vinyl masking. You can get it by, I think, Oracle, something like that. It's on that Amazon link that you'll find. You'll either find it now down in the description or I'll have it later posted there as well. But this is uh, basically a removal of masking. It's not going to leave or shouldn't leave any kind of residue when you pull it off not meant to stay it's just meant to aid in in painting Cool little overlap there. We'll be able to add some drop shadowing to that to make it look even more 3D, whichever way we end up applying it. Thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. We almost got it.
think I'm starting to breathe hard. Whew. It's a lot of work. At least you get to know, you know exactly how long it does take. better okay it looks like we got a little couple here really small ones get those out of here couple of these didn't cut all the way. I'll uh, just trim it up freehand a little bit. Almost for us right here. Ah, oh, these little ones are brutal. Let's go. I ain't gonna lie, my anxiety is through the roof right now. Come on, I almost got it. Three more. And then we gotta cut a couple out that didn't quite make it through the cutter. Okay. Uh, right here, actually this one's a little bit small. It's because when it, well, the picture that I picked had a drop shadow right here. Uh, so it didn't, it didn't cut it very good. So you can see how this, I didn't really find the edge. I could have went in and probably refined it a little more in, in the program, but um, I didn't want to have to do that. I was running out of time and I, I knew I could just cut it out. So I'm just gonna trim this one. Make it look a little better.
I cut that one all the way out of the back. Okay. All right, that's it. That was a lot of work. Still 41 people with me. Holy crap. So there it is. Um, now we just need to figure out the placement. Now that we have a better look at it. All right, let's grab this thing. Then we're gonna figure out the best way it fits. It kind of fits in with what we already have going on here. So what I was thinking was this way, because this kind of wraps up and around that. I, I definitely want to paste this onto where there's flake. I don't want to paste it on over there because then I don't have the metal flick underneath so we're just going to tie this into that um and then i'm going to come back with the fine line tape and we'll cut we'll make a cut off right here and then i'll end up blending back into the the mural there and make it all work there so but yeah we can i was thinking like that when i was kind of looking it over and um most likely this part will kind of go into a panel and kind of come out from underneath i'm not sure where but uh you know i do want another silver leaf stripe on this as well so maybe that silver leaf stripe will be right here and it, this will kind of tuck underneath that this will kind of come under the tank or maybe maybe that leafing will come up underneath who knows maybe not maybe the leafing will just come stop right here this can kind of come up and around there, fill up that spot, and then we'll figure out the rest as we go. But this is kind of how I do most paint jobs. People ask me, do you design it all out or do you draw it out or what do you do? But uh, the answer to that question is I kind of start with something and build off of it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. And But the nice thing is we already have something to start with. So I feel like that's a good curve. We can do that as well which that's nice too, but uh, let me look at that again, because maybe I do like that. Maybe I do like that a little better. Kind of like that. I don't know if I like it better than that though. I like this better because it looks good both ways. I like how that wraps up around that. And then also I do want a silver leaf line going through there. And I feel like this is cutting off too much of that. That's gonna cut right into that, which, which is probably okay. I mean, These are the decisions. No, I think I'm gonna go with what I was first thinking right there. I like them both ways though. What do you guys think? South Africa, Pierre, what's up man? Jeremy, I'm glad I can help. Uh, somebody asked, this is pre-recorded on Amazon. It's not pre-recorded. Uh, I have a lot of chats I'm trying to keep track of here. Uh, yeah, somebody asked about if I'm painting bikes. I'm really not. I'm, I'm painting some stuff, but uh, my schedule is full. Okay, let's get to it. Nobody cares about that. All right. So, 
Boom, that's what we're doing. Now we need to transfer it. The best method would be to use some transfer tape. I don't have any transfer tape. So I'm just gonna use this 3M, uh, it's the thickest tape I have. Inch and a half, inch and, yeah, I think it's an inch and a half. Two inches. Gonna apply some masking tape to this over the top so we can transfer it onto the tank. It's a little stickier than I like it to be, so I do stick it to myself. Get a little bit of the tack off. Okay, I'm gonna set it the way I want it, which is like that. Definitely if you have transfer tape, like I said, it's gonna be better. Transfer tape is just a big sheet, big sheet of clear paper, clear paper, or transparent somewhat. Stick that one. Okay. Here we go. Not the best way to do it, but it works. That's all you have. Some of the loose ends here so we don't have to deal with it when we're trying to stick it There it is. Easy enough. We're gonna transfer it to the tank. Let's find our edge, which is right there. I got one shot at this because I really don't wanna redo this stencil. I like it right there. Start by sticking the middle. And just working out from there. Not letting the edges down before I stick the middle and move out.
And if you have wrinkles, you're going to want to try to keep them in to where, like you can see, uh, hopefully you can see it's pretty bright, uh, but uh, in the middle where we don't have a masking, is that's where you're going to want it to wrinkle at. That way it's not messing with your, with the actual, uh, your project itself. Okay, that'll look good because that's going to come right out of the bottom, follow around the face right there. Okay, slide. Go ahead and grab a razor blade and I'm just going to press this down a little more so it's easier to pull this tape up hopefully Hey, Spanky from Sweden. Thanks for joining in. Thanks, Jason. Somebody says they're seeing the film strip on the front. I mean, the front of the tank. Because that would be right over her image. Maybe on the other side, because I do have to do something different on the other side. But I'm going to go ahead and pull off the transfer tape we have here, or the masking tape. A little messed up right there. We'll fix that here in a minute. All right, we got it. A couple of spots we do need to fix. We'll just kind of trim it up a little bit. Just gonna cut a slit and then allow it to overlap where it has a wrinkle in it or a crease. And you're not really gonna be able to tell. There's not really gonna be much distortion. This right here looks like we can kind of a couple little wrinkles in it. Try to lift this up. I just trimmed it right down the center and then reconnected it. Couple right here. Okay, 
That looks good. Okay, now we have a couple of things going on. The whole side's pretty much something's going on. So what we're going to do next is I'll look over. If you guys have any questions? Um, Low and Slow asks if the decal leaves any residue. And no, if, you, if you're using transfer vinyl, it shouldn't. Because that's exactly what it's for. It's, it's meant to be removed without leaving any kind of uh, residue. Okay. All right. Uh, looks like nothing crazy. All right. I'm going to take eighth inch lime line tape here, and then I'm going to run it around um, kind of wherever I, I see fit. But uh, I do kind of like to start with the teardrop style. So um, I, I do, and another thing I do know I want is I do want some kind of a silver strip, a silver leafing that's gonna follow right above right here. So um, I, in fact, I might even, yeah, it is gonna cut into a little bit of that as well. So that's fine. So the top portion right here, this will be leaf. that earring in there. I started it a little too early and I didn't want to lose that earring. Let's try that one more time. So what I'm going to do is, you know I do want to come out of the bottom here as well. Make sure that thing's straight too. It looks straight to me. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, so... I'm going to trim this. I'm going to trim it part way up so I can restart this line and get it straight. And that way I can take this bend up and around. Basically, I'm just going to start it on the existing tape right where it starts line it up and then start again off of that. And then I'm just going to meet back into this existing line right here. And if I can keep track of my razor blade. Another little trick too is if you take the razor blade. Where am I at here? You take the razor blade and you just lay it across and you just pull up. That way you don't have to actually cut on the surface. Just a little trick.
All right, let me eyeball that, make sure it looks all right, and then I'll trim that stencil up. good let's trim it there we go that's a good angle all right so just gonna lightly cut over these portions where it's gonna it's gonna come out from underneath that that line right there, which this will be a strip of silver. You'll see that here in a minute. But basically, we're just giving it a start point to where it doesn't just like come out of thin air. So now it's kind of kind of coming out of this underneath. We'll be able to add a drop shadow right there, along with some of these other, like right here. We'll add a drop shadow there, and that's gonna look so good. I did actually want to run my leaf this way, but I didn't want to lose. I felt like this was the money shot right here. I didn't want to lose that. All right, back with the eighth inch tape. Okay, so I know I know I need to run in line right here because that transition right there is not very attractive you can see that you know somehow we're going to have to split this image up from the rest and as you can see here i did overlap right here which is fine but i am gonna this is all going to be leafed and not flaked so that's going to give me a transition um, into the leaf up here and i'm going to need a transition here so whether or not I do leaf right here, I don't think I'm going to. Um, I'm going to tape it out and look, but uh, I don't feel like leaf going in that direction is going to look. I don't know. That's what I say. I, I build these up as I go, and I'll tape it out if I think it might look good. And then I'll look at it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that looks good. And I'll just go with it. But uh, for now, I'm just going to kind of follow right on the edge where we do have flake. We're going to be taping on because we're going to want this line to stay the silver flake. He actually made a pretty good line when he taped this off, so I might get a little closer to that. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I'm liking that. Okay. Uh, Low and slow asked what colors we're going to go with the silver and black. So we're going to keep a lot of the silver we have on here. We're going to use a, a black base coat. We'll be doing that here, uh, hopefully in a minute, in a little bit. Lay out some black base coat. And then um, at that point, I'm going to decide what goes. Uh, some of it's going to go candy purple, but I'm not sure what yet. Okay, I'm liking that line. I'm liking what we got going on so far. If I didn't like it, I would just pull it off and start over. But I'm liking it, so that's good. Good for good for both of us. Now that we got that going on, we're going to go ahead and uh, I know that I want about a one inch thick of a line of leafing, similar to what we have here. Get a good shot of that. It's pretty bright here. You can see this all the way around. All right, about one inch thick. So there's, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can run 
a one inch tape line to kind of give you a guide. I feel like that's a little unnecessary, but if you, you want it perfect or if you feel like you need it for a guide, go ahead and do that. Let me get this trimmed as well. From this line we had earlier but we met into the other side of that tape i'm going to want to look at this because tape doesn't quite line up there we go that's better. but that stuff i'll double check before i go get rid of paint let me get over here let's see hot in here. Okay, that looks, looks pretty good. That looks really good. Looks even. Yep. Okay, now that I have that, I'm going to kind of work off of what else I have going on here. So I know I still have the top of the tank. And uh, he does have a dash that goes right there, which he didn't give me, which would have been nice because then I could just like mock up the dash. And I know exactly what that line is and I can kind of, but in that case, I kind of have to stay away from that. So if you don't have the dash, it's not worth coming up underneath here, just to let you know, because unless you could think you can build it out exact without having that dash, you're going to notice a little bit of a difference. So I don't even attempt it. I just come straight off this edge down here. That way I know if it I come in, it's going to come in at the same point. You just don't know if you don't have the, the dash. So I'm just going to follow, like I said, about a half an inch away from the edge here and then go straight down. Okay, so that's this is the room we have to work with here um something whatever we're deciding to do there we'll probably do some lace i feel like uh the lace will be a good look with the with the marilyn monroe i don't know what do you guys think but the, like i said i just kind of i kind of wing it as i go and i do these on all the jobs yeah uh somebody mentioned there's a bunch of epa law with scrap today that's definitely a good good thing for us with the waterborne and stuff like that it was coming on pretty strong uh pierre says ruby do ruby red oh yeah ruby red would be awesome would be awesome it, it definitely would go along with what we got going on all right so what are we going to fill it up with i don't know Probably lace right there. I want to keep it pretty simple. I could always come in here and, you know, create another line right here. Like you can experiment at this point. Like, okay, that's the room I got to work with. Maybe I'll line it up exactly with this tape and maybe I'll go and hit the center right here and then match this one too. 
you know, just kind of eyeball that down to the center. You trim those two pieces of tape, then you have a point right there. But uh, I don't think I don't think I necessarily want to do anything here because I really want that lace to show up. I want the nice blend right here. I am gonna hit this with 16th inch tape. Go around this as well. Um, you know, I might actually do something right here to kind of fill in that area a little bit. So let's go ahead and pull this tape up right there. Go about a half an inch. Like that I'm going to trim this so comes to a point yeah that's better so I'm just putting a little panel in the in the center of that because it was kind of big I mean I wanted a lot of lace but I don't want that much so I probably I don't know what I'm gonna do in that yet different texture or something Something that maybe goes along with that. I don't necessarily want to make it a themed paint job. I just kind of want to add a little bit of different elements in order to make it make it kind of cool. So they're like, oh, look, there's her lips that matches with the the mural. I don't. Know. That's the idea. Yeah, lace with the movie tape. So that's another thing I was thinking is I could do the lace behind the movie tape. Uh, we'll see. But I, I like the idea of maybe just doing a really soft blend right there. Yeah, I'm not doing anything on the mural itself because I painted that a while back and I really just don't want to mess with it. Yeah, thanks guys. Thanks, Pierre. Let's keep going on this. All right, so I think I got the lines laid out. I got some 16th inch tape here, half the size of the eighth inch. And basically we're gonna kind of mirror exactly what we got going on on one side of the tape. Where's my 16th? There it is. Sixteenth inch. So what I definitely want to do is I, I know I want to border this area right here. So go ahead and start there. I'm gonna get I'm gonna step back about an eighth of an inch from the eighth inch tape so you can kind of guide it off about. My hands all over the place. Let's try that again. distance here
Okay. So we'll also border the inside of this. So you, as you can see, I'm just bordering. This is how I like to do it. I just border one side. You could go through and border both sides. Not this side because that's going to be leave. But uh, you could border like this side and that side. I, I like to just do one side. You can do both sides. Do whatever you want. That gives it much more of a finished look. Man, sorry it's so bright, guys. So there you can go. You can see it, it gives it way more of a finished look. I'm going to trim this. Right. come off of off of this edge right here over the strip a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and trim this one a little short because I do want to round this corner. I could come to a point, but I like, and I'll show you why I like it. Come off tape again. And then I'm gonna round that edge a little fatter right there. I'll get I'll get you guys a close up. Let me finish this up. go you see it uh right there you can see how nice that looks you could come to a point way up in here but i feel like kind of like a rounded edge into a corner like that it's just a it's a good way to finish it up so i'm going to trim that by pulling the tape and just laying down the blade i'm going to allow the the film to overlap this 16th inch right here. That way we can put a little tiny drop shadow there. Trim this bottom a little bit. You see right there, we did come to a point here. You could also round that. But I'd like it to have it a little different. All right, that's looking really good. 
And then I'll probably end up putting a pinstripe in this in the pigmented color, uh, but I won't do that until after I blend this line in right here. So that'll come into play later. If I if I feel like it needs to be, it may not have been a sixteenth inch. May not have need to be there. Okay, we got one more we're gonna lay out, which is right here. Okay. All right, we're just about ready to mix up some some paint. We have these handy little cups here. Stir sticks. Those are from Limeline. You can get those if you're if you're watching on Amazon. You can get those on the link that's uh, posted right below the video. But this, that's just a black base coat. It's been thinned out with urethane reducer to make it sprayable through the airbrush. So um, when paint when base coat comes out of a can, like however you get it, for instance, this is a urethane base coat. Um, the it comes thicker. It comes thicker than what you need to spray out of an airbrush. That's for sure. So you need to reduce it with something to make it thinner. So it sprays out and it's not so thick and doesn't splatter and all that stuff that uh, that happens if it's too thick. But they thin it out, and really it's hard to say. You know, usually it's a one to one. It depends on the brand. It depends on the temperature. Depends on your airbrush size. But uh, as you can see here, hopefully y'all can see that dripping. Yeah, it's uh, pretty watery. So you got to have it pretty watery. You can always work with it being a little thinner than you can being too thick. Because if it's too thick, you, you, you're forced to turn up your air pressure in order to get the paint to pull out of your airbrush. And even then, you're going to be splattering all over and everything else. But... Uh, I think I'm already loaded up here. Let me check it out. Oh yeah. So we're loaded up. This is a 1.3 size spray tip. Let me grab a piece of paper and we'll see what kind of That looks nice. Now, if it was splatter, if it splattered right here like crazy, or you know, uh, or maybe it's hard to tell if it's too thin, especially spraying on paper. But you'd know if it was too thick because you would have like it wouldn't be smooth like that. Let's see how it's just yeah, having a hard time focusing. But as long as you got a smooth blend, that's all we're gonna do is basically follow the tape lines. To, uh, to make it and blend it in. And then we'll worry about the, what we're gonna fill the graphics up later, but we're gonna get the, the tape lines definitely nailed down right now. And then we'll kind of go from there. But I'm all loaded up here. Turn on the fan behind me to get this. To, you really, you should be wearing a respirator. I know a lot of people say that all the time, but I got a fan blowing behind me. And I need to be able to talk. Okay, that's looking good. Any questions? I'll check that real quick. India, RX100. Thanks, man. Good vibes, Pedro. Yeah, somebody said, uh, Brad, say BMW's gray scale color change paint. Huh. Never heard of it. The 
borderline you are taping off are you going to fill it in with color so yeah i'm gonna fill it in with black right now the the actual tape lines what what lies underneath the tape line is still the flake that will stay stay uh silver the silver is the color you see right now uh, we could also go back after we pull the tape we could hit some gold or whatever color on there as well as long as you're edging it in black because candies don't show up over black and then as long as you're blending it out enough um if not you would have to retape it but uh, like i said this comes in this this happen, all happens in layers it kind of gets built up that way and if you haven't seen it before you'll, you'll be able to see some of it now All right, let's get started. So as you can see, I'm doing multiple passes here. I'm not just like staying and filling it all the way in. I'm kind of like brushing it like you would a paintbrush back and forth. bit of water in my lines oh yeah so I'm using a little studio airbrush compressor by Iwata and it has a little drain valve in it and uh, I just drained that so you can see a little bit of water is coming up through there Get that out of the line here. Okay. I'm actually going to turn my air pressure down just a little bit. So right now, and I'm sure some of you are wondering I'm running uh, about 14 pounds of pressure pretty low all I'm doing is really just aiming between the two lines that I laid out and making sure I have full coverage I'm doing it in passes because by the time I get over here, the paint over here is already almost all the way dry. I mean, this paint right here is already dry. You can see how fast this is just base coat. Base coat is meant to, it's meant to dry fast. It doesn't have any kind of a clear or anything in it that slows it down. edges down all right I'll go ahead and start on on the film strip here I do want to keep I don't want to blend a whole lot into the inside. 
keep it pretty, pretty tight. I don't want to fill in those whole squares. I want it to be a nice blend there. I missed a little dot right here and one right here. That one wasn't cut out all the way. We can always go in there and repair it if we need it, but there's gonna be a gnarly drop shadow right there, so you're not gonna tell. water in there still if that happens just dry it off it's not it's not that big of a deal it doesn't really mix with your paint it just kind of comes out all at once if you live in a humid area you're gonna have a lot more problems I'm here in Utah so it's pretty dry and very rarely do I really even see that usually unless I I don't drain drain it at all.
looks like there's a little bit in the front of this. You can see how quickly this goes. I mean, laying out the tape is what took the time. Laying down the paint, we're just kind of building layers on top of top of the tape lines, focusing directly in the center of the two. Okay. Oh yeah, I think we got it. Whew, okay, so far so good. Gerald, Ger Gerald? I guess that's how you say it. From Holland. Nice work. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah, let me know if you guys have any other questions. Um, I'm here to help you. I can kind of glance at it here and there and see. But uh, on Amazon, so I got a few on Amazon, 153. Thanks for being here, guys. Lisa Shakira is not the Shakira I'm thinking. Valley Springs Communications, thanks for being here, guys. All right. We're getting close. We're getting really close. Um, we're going to kind of decide whether or not, you know, some people mentioned maybe put the lace in the side or uh, behind the, uh, the film there. Uh, that's a great idea. That'd be, you know, we can blend into some lace there. I feel like just having the flake with the blend, and um, I think that's good enough for that because, you know, it would be in the, the the film. I don't know. It could be nice because having the the lace here and not the lace in the film, it would give it maybe uh, a little bit of a contrast. The film's kind of going over the top, but. Maybe that's a good look. I, I really imagine the, the lace being up here, and that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And we're going to stick with the blends right there. I feel like it's simple, and, and, and it's going to look good. We have a whole bagger to do, and I really don't want to make it too busy. I'm not trying to do every design I can think of on this thing. I just want to kind of make it proportionate to where it looks good. All right. So that being said... We'll go ahead and break out some lace here. I do want to make sure that I'm not going to get any overspray onto these areas over here. Run a little tape line right there. Keep it really nice and really crisp. All right, I got some lace I had laying around here. I'm gonna go ahead and use that for this project. 
If you're uh, if you're on Amazon, you can check on the link there. I think there's probably you'll see the limeline lace there for sure. See some other laces as well. You can check out. Good. Okay, and then once I go to spraying, I'll kind of hold that down. Another thing is you're gonna to want to make sure that your airbrush is loaded when you start this. Yeah, good enough. I'll be able to finish it. You want to make sure it's loaded. That way, if you have to stop and you're holding it and you got to reposition the stencil, it's not an easy thing to do. So make sure you have enough. Enough paint in your airbrush. really soft with this and you can see I'm about I don't know six inches away or so Let me take a peek at this make sure I'm getting enough on there a little bit more blend blend some over reduced black also into this yeah, that looks good. looks good we'll go ahead and pull the tape that tape. Let's try this other side. Oh, still pulling. Here we go. Okay, looking good. All right, I'm not sure what I'm going to put here. I'm going to leave it blank for now because this will go into clear coat and it's easy enough to retape that off and to, to mask it out and, and to decide then. Because right now I just don't want to, I don't want to decide what to do. So I know this needs to go through plenty of different layers. What I mean by layers is uh, once I pull the tape on this, it'll get clear coated and get sanded down once it's dry with 600 grit and then we start back over again because that what that's going to do is the clear is going to build up over our paint edges which there's not much here but uh, if you do try to cross over on one graphic with another and you have an edge there you're going to be able to see it and overall you just i like to have my paint jobs to where you can't fill any of the graphics so it does take multiple clear coat sessions to do that
All right, so I'm going to take a little bit of the, the same black that I have in the airbrush. And I added a little more reducer to it. I'm making a mess here. You see it's, it's super thin now. The reason why I'm thinning it out is because I want that blend to be even lighter. And you can also, another trick is, you can add a little bit of clear base coat in with that mixture to make it less potent of a black. You're not going to be able to make it a candy black. It still has a pigment to it, but you'd be able to make it a lot more transparent. I'm going to go ahead and load up my airbrush here. All right, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go over my existing lines again, but what I'm doing is I'm kind of, uh, I'm being lighter with it because it's a lot thinner and I'm just letting it kind of blend in and kind of into the centers and let it kind of tint it a little bit darker. Just basically giving it a, a wider fade. Also going to fade in that little bit of an edge we had there for it transition. Okay, I think we got it here. We're gonna get ready to peel off this masking. A little bit more of a fade up into here. Okay, that's looking good. Looking dark, that's, that's what we want. A lot of contrast here. Okay, a good question somebody asked here, Oracle Music. Uh, why do we want to do dark candies before light if they're translucent? That's a great, great question. Um, 
The reason being is because you can lay light colors over dark colors without them really showing up. So if you lay if you lay your dark colors first, say like a for instance, we were to pull all this tape um, and we laid our darker color. And then now if we wanted to, once we pulled the tape, we can go in there with the airbrush and hit it with say a gold candy. And as long as you've made your blend good enough, you're not gonna have to tape up that area. You're able just to spray the and tint just what the silver is left um, and it won't show up over the black. Um, some candies like reds and really dark candies, they do show up just, they tint the black just a little bit, but it's not that big of a deal. You can always do, you can always take care of that just by, you know, either masking it up or, or like I said, uh, just being really careful. But uh, hopefully that answers your question. It is, you start with darks and you move lights, which is the exact, exact opposite when you're using pigmented colors. Usually you start with your lights and then go to your darks after that. But we are working with transparent colors here. So the, uh, the method is a little bit different. All right, so I like to use these Limeline tape removal blades. The reason being is because when you go to pull off the tape, a lot of times what you'll do is you'll end up scratching uh, a little bit of your base coat off. It's a pain in the butt. So I like to use these with so a plastic and they won't harm the paint. Get it started there. All right, sorry guys, I'm at the end of this live. I have my uh, have somebody coming in, but uh, hey, I'll pull this tape for you and you'll be able to see it on maybe the next live. I'll have it on my social media, but thanks for being here.